I want to read this from your book. So who is a nice guy? This is what you say. He is relative. Uh, he is the relative who lets his wife run the show. He is the friend who will do anything for anybody, but whose own life seems to be in shambles. He is the guy who frustrates his wife because he's afraid of conflict that nothing uh, ever gets resolved. He is the boss who tells one person what they want to hear, then re reverses himself to please someone else. He is the man who lets people walk all over him because he doesn't want to rock the boat. He is the dependable guy at work who will never say no but would never tell anyone if they were imposing on him. And then characteristics of a nice guy, nice guys seek the approval of others. They try to hide their uh, perceived flaws and mistakes. They put other people's needs and wants before them. They sacrifice their own personal power and often play the role of victim. They tend to be disconnected from other men and from their own masculine energy. They co-create relationships that are less than satisfying. They create situations in which they do not have very uh, much good sex and they frequently fail to live up to their full potential. So now when this nice guy gets married, married, what does life look like for a nice guy like this? <laughs> I can tell you I've been there. Yeah, typically he's trying to please his partner, trying to make her happy, trying to avoid conflict. Um, uh, a real big manifestation of this is where he won't bring up anything that might upset her. So he won't tell her the whole truth about stuff. He'll leave things out, which as you probably know, if you, if you want to really upset or trigger a woman, let her find out something that you hadn't told her about. And uh, that, that just messes with the trust. Um, so yeah, is that, is that avoidance of conflict, the dishonesty, the trying to please, the hiding of things from her that you don't want her to find out. And, and in terms of sex, it's, it's usually just a, a lot of pleasing and trying to get them into the mood. Uh, it's kind of like, well, you know, sneaking your sexual agenda up on her, you know, giving her the back rub, hoping that, you know, she'll be okay with that. And then sneaking your hand around to the side of her breast to see if, you know, if she gives a negative reaction or approval. You just, you just offended 95% of men around the world. <laughs> They're going, that's my technique. That's my, that's my skill set. Um, and, and, and that stuff, you know, the woman knows what we're doing. Oh, he's yeah. giving me the back rub because he's hoping blah, 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 blah. And, and, it, that doesn't tend to turn most women on, but we think it, we got to sneak our agenda up on them. And so what happens is, is I find that most women, you know, most women you mentioned earlier about when they respond to my book, the majority of women really like the book. Um, you know, when, when it was published in 2003, Barnes and Noble, the publisher thought, oh, this is going to stir up a real feminist storm. It never happened. You know, I maybe have gotten in you know, 18 years, six angry emails from women Almost all of them haven't read the book, but maybe their husband or boyfriend did and broke up with them. And now they're going ballistic because it's my book's fault that the, and you know, and I'm, I'm thinking when I'm reading the email, go run guy, run. I can see why you left this woman. So, I mean, women like the idea of a man being honest, authentic, assertive, setting the tone and leading, having a plan, showing up with their sexuality, you know, is full force, you know, right there. And, and, and most women are going to respond better to that than the guy that's hidden, secretive, pleasing, placating, avoiding. Yeah, that's just not a turn on. So, so can we categorize what's good sex, what's bad sex? Oh, that's, that's a good topic to jump into. Um, I think good sex would probably be the kind that everybody wants to keep having again. Um, that'd be good sex. Bad sex in, in my experience, is, when, is anxiety ridden, guilt ridden, shame ridden, um, uh, approval ridden, performance ridden. I, t I tell men, I hate it when I hear the word sexual and performance used in the same sentence. Sex is not a performance. Sex is showing up and enjoying each other's bodies. I mean, that, that, that's to me is good sex. Uh, you know, I, I'm enjoying my partner's body while she's enjoying my body. It doesn't get any better than that. And if it's uninhibited. Wait, and, are you saying like timeline doesn't matter with performance, you and her both being satisfied? You know, you're saying performance is not tied to good sex. So if you do yours and you're like, listen, I got mine. It was amazing. You'll light up that little <laughs> cable cigar, cigarette. And she's sitting there empty handed saying, dude, and, and what the hell was this all about? What? You call that sex? 
<laughs> well, and, and here's the thing, you know, we, we can do a deep dive into this. I, I think sex and, and if, you know, there's a, there's a lot of really good writers out there from uh, uh, Dr. David Snarch, book called Passionate Marriage. He just passed away a few weeks ago. Uh, David Data, The Way of Superior Man, Osho, uh, Rajanish, who had, you know, out in Oregon, had that, that, that clan out there. Mm -hmm. Just some, some great, great writings about sex being the most powerful container for us to do our deepest work as human beings because sex is at the core of who we are you know sex is how we got to be on this planet uh so it's at the core of who we are so if we can use sex if, if a man and woman man and man woman and woman doesn't matter how, how you're paired up can can consciously approach sex as, as I call it, as a powerful personal growth machine, not just a way to get off, not just a way to get some validation, not just a way to get our partner's approval, but as a powerful personal growth machine, everything that shows up in that container is, is good. Everything that shows up in there is opportunity to do our deepest work. We're not going to do, there's nothing else in life that's going to help us do deeper work than a conscious sexual container with another conscious partner. So, of course, everybody's got to be enjoying this, but I found that when what happens with a lot of nice guys, especially they, they, they fall into what I call the white guy shuffle. And, and why I call it that is I took salsa dance lessons for a few years up in the Seattle area. And in that, in that particular area, they, the, the term for a guy that just kind of keeps doing the same move over and over again um, is called the white guy shuffle. I, I, it seems appropriate because I, I, I kind of tended to do that. Oh, I don't want to risk. I don't know that move real well. I'll just keep doing the one I know. And I, I had a, a Chinese salsa teacher, a guy named Jim Chow in Seattle. So props to Jim Chow. Mr. Chow. Used to, it used to interrupt every class and shout at the guys, leads, be thinking ahead. What is your next move? Two or three moves ahead. Because if you don't, you're going to repeat the same old thing. And the woman's going to get bored and go find someone else to dance with. And every time he said that, I said, amen, because that's true about sex. So what happens? Here's what a lot of nice guys do. They, they do, the, like I said, the back rub, the, the sneak the sex up on her, and, and they go, okay, I, I want her to want to have sex with me again, so I'm going to do what worked last time. I know if I kind of tweaked her nipple this way last time, and then they kind of went down on her a little bit, and then did that, she got off. So I'm going to do that next time, because that worked the last time. And do you know how quickly that gets boring to a woman? Do you know how quickly she's going to go find another dance partner when we show up with the same moves every time? And so it's that white guy shuffle. Most women long term in relationship, a primary reason a lot of them lose interest in sex is not because they don't like sex. They just lose interest in the same damn thing every time. I mean, I, I, I have no idea what your wife is like, but, you know, can she wear the same outfit to work in one in a month? You know, no. you can probably wear the same suit twice a week right? She would never do that. How often does she change her nails, do her hair differently? How often does she want to rearrange the furniture, go shoe shopping for shoes that she doesn't need? But yeah, oh, this would be so great with this outfit that the feminine needs that variety yeah. to, to fill it. And if we're going to approach our woman and bring the same old thing every time and throw that down and think that's going to you know, make her want to come back for more, it doesn't. But here's, here's the, the, the paradox, the irony. If two people don't have agendas and are not trying to perform, and each time they get together is just an exploration of what feels good, what what's cool about this person's body, with my body, oh that that seems to be getting us off, or, or or you know what what stories can I tell this person to get them aroused, or what and 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 his play and and as we learn to be in our bodies and pay attention and move the sexual energy around and 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 play with it with each other, I mean is it. That's good sex. That's fun. 